Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to perform some basic covariance analysis in Excel. So I'll show you two examples, one using the covariance function and the other one using the covariance feature in the data analysis tool pack. So what covariance does is it looks to see if there's a relationship between two variables. It's one of those statistical bivariate analysis tools. So when we have two variables, let's say we have an X variable and a Y variable. I'm just going to make up some numbers here. We'll use the rand between function to make up some numbers. Let's make up some numbers between uh, 23 and 113. Maybe those are some good numbers here. Control enter will enter the function into all the cells that I've selected here. And we want to see if there's a relationship between these two cells. And the function that we can use is covariance. There's covariance for a population a covariance for a sample, and an older covariance function, which is compatible with Excel 27, 2007. I'm going to use covariance.s for the sample. In most cases, when you're doing analysis, you pretty much have a sample within the population. And uh, usually that, that's going to be something that you use more of than the population. Uh, basically, the population takes on a, a different calculation. So I'm going to use the covariance.s click that, click my first array here, comma, and then my second array here, and then press enter. And you notice that it gives me back a value of 52. What does that mean? It just means that there is a positive uh, covariance with these two uh, variables. If I press the F9 key a couple times, you'll see that it changes a bit, and you'll notice that also now it's turned negative in this case, negative 195. So that's showing me there is a negative relationship between X and Y. And one way to better see this is to plot it on a scatter graph. So go to insert and go to my charts group here and select scatter. And we'll see our blank template here for my scattergram or my scatter chart. I'm gonna select my data. We're gonna add my series X values and then add the series Y values and click OK. And now we have this bunch of data points. Really doesn't tell us too much until we put a trend line there. So let's just put a trend line there and usually it just gives us by default a linear trend line. And you can see that you can see that it goes down. So what this is telling us is that as the values of X increases, the values of y decrease. So that's what covariance will just tell you the direction of the relationship. There's a negative uh, relationship between the x and y's value. So if I press the F9 key a couple more times, you can see now that it's showing us a different relationship. This is positive now. So now as the x values go up, the y value goes up. So this shows a positive relationship. So that's what it just shows you. Now, if we had many variables, let's go into our second example here, and I'll show you one of the fallacies of using um, this particular example. So if we had a bunch of examples, we want to kind of see the relationship. Let's say these are satisfaction scores, overall satisfaction scores, and satisfaction scores for hardware, software, support, and website. And I'm just going to create some dummy data here too. And put the rand function to do that. Rand between uh, one and five. So one being bad score, five being a great score. So press control enter to enter that value here. And now I'm gonna use the data analysis tool pack. Under data, go to analysis. If you don't have this available on your particular version of Excel, maybe it's not enabled, just Google Microsoft data analysis tool pack, install or enable and you should get to Microsoft site and show you and they'll show you how to enable it. So I go to data analysis and I am going to select the covariance option. Click OK. My input range is A1 to E12. And I have labels in my first row. Row one is all labels. My output range, I'll just put it here in H1. All right? H1, click OK. And now you notice that it's giving me some values here. So if we looked at our overall score and compared it to the hardware, we have that relationship. So there is a positive relationship because this is a positive number. 
if we looked at the overall score and look at the website score, there's a negative relationship there. And using this feature just gives you an easy way to look at a matrix of, of values. So if you wanted to compare uh, one to the other, uh, it will give you back a matrix, a table. So as I mentioned before, there is a particular way that Excel does this. So let's look at the overall versus overall score because that's going to change as I um, update this table. The other ones don't change because they're static, but this one will change because it's referencing the table here. So I'll show you what uh, Excel does with this particular example. So it uses the population covariance um, calculation. If I select overall and then press comma and then select overall again, and close parentheses, now you notice these values are the same. These are the covariance of, uh, func values for the population. But if I did covariance for the sample, and I selected A1 to A2 to A12, and did the array 2 for A1, A2 to A12, now you notice that it's a different value. So just one thing to keep in mind if you decide to use the data analysis tool pack, the way that it's calculating the covariance is based on the population calculation, not the sample. So that's just one thing that you need to consider. So here's your basic example of how to use the covariance features in Excel. One, using the function itself, and the other using the data analysis tool pack to determine that. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.